Hey, this is Andrew, and this video series is intended to share what I've learned about spreadsheets uh, to save time and increase productivity, especially in the nonprofit and education sectors. I'm not an expert, but hopefully that'll make my explanations a little more accessible. And I'm happy to answer questions below this video in the comments section as I get time. Uh, remember, you can pause or uh, rewind the video anytime you need to if I go too quickly. So we're in the fourth lesson of this short series talking about how to build a budget in Google Sheets. And this lesson we're going to be talking about how to represent data visually. The objective for this lesson will be that colleagues will be able to create graphs and charts from data. So let's take a look at where we're at um, with the budget that we're creating. We took just a list of amounts and categories and we broke it down into some subcategories. We took average costs, and we added together costs, and we calculated the difference from uh, a budget to actual spending. Uh, below here, and we even broke it down into what percent of the budget is going to each budget category. We formatted the information the way we wanted to, um, and we practiced using functions and formulas to do all that. Next up, we're going to talk about how to produce visuals, and we're going to be focusing on three, three different kinds, a line graph, pie graph, and a bar graph. So we're going to get a line graph of supply costs over time, the budget category breakdown, which is right here in a pie chart, and the difference from the budget, whether or not we exceeded or didn't meet the budget for each month right here. And um, right off the bat, I'm going to admit that I am not an expert. I never formally learned how to do this. And so a lot of the way that I learn things is by trial and error. Um, so bear with me, um, and we'll, we'll figure it out together. <clears throat> okay. We're going to start with the pie graph because that's the easiest one to do right off the bat. I want these categories to show up as a part of the legend. So I'm going to select them first and I'm going to hold down the control key on a Windows keyboard or a command key on a Mac keyboard and I'm going to select the numbers that I want represented. Um, and by holding down the control or command key you can actually select two different areas at the same time. It, and just to review a little bit, if you select one cell and you hold down the shift key and then select another cell, it will select everything in between them. So if I select here and then I hold down shift and I select the last value, it will select the whole, all the values in between. But if I select a range or a cell and hold down the control or command key and select another range or cell, it will select those two ranges and not the things in between. So I'm going to select those. And then I'm going to go up to Insert. Remember, this is Google Sheets. It works a little differently in Excel, but um, not very differently. And I'm going to insert a chart. By clicking Insert Chart, uh, it actually comes up with the recommended uh, chart that Google thinks that I want. And it's usually pretty, pretty spot on. In fact, it identified right away that it, this probably works in a pie chart. And uh, so I can go right ahead with this, but I can also look at what it might look like if I represented it differently in different formats. Um, these are different variations on the pie chart. Um, scatter plot, uh, not very useful here. Um, yeah, exploring some of these might be interesting for you, but I'm going to stick with, uh, well, bar, bar, bar graph would work uh, pretty well, but I'm going to stick with pie chart because it's percents out of 100 out of a whole. And then I'm going to go to customization where I can add in uh, things like titles and, um, and data labels. So I'm going to change the chart title to um, budget category breakdown. The legend I can change to have it be on the bottom, uh, but I like it on the right side. I can change the font and the size. Uh, maybe I actually want the text to be a little bigger. So I can change a lot of the, the features here. I can have it just be a value uh, or a percentage. Um, I actually kind of like the value because then it's not rounded to the decimal place. Um, I don't need a donut hole. Kind of like the 3D feature. Um, and I can change the color of any of the uh, different slices, but I can do that afterwards also. So if it looks kind of like how I wanted to, I can click Insert, and it just pops it right into here. 
One thing to note is that if you change any of these numbers, say I change this to 89, it's going to update it automatically, but that wouldn't actually add up to 100%, so I'm going to undo that and keep it the way it was. Um, so this actually looks pretty much like I wanted to, and you'll notice it actually has a little um, graphic built in, um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with how that looks. You can change the size, and if you do want to change any of the features, you can click on, on a, a slice and you can actually change the color that it is. Um, I don't want that. Undo. Um, and you can go up into this little arrow key and advance edit, and you can, uh, you can edit it any way that you'd like going back there. You can also, with this little arrow, click Save Image, and it will prompt you to uh, save it as, I believe, a JPG file. So if I wanted to save that as an image in my Downloads folder, I can do that, and it should... Oh, okay, it saves it as a PNG file. But then it saves it as a static image, so it won't change at all, and it's easier to embed in a document uh, or uh, a presentation in that way. You can also uh, right-click and, and uh, copy it. Right now it's in edit mode. I can click to view mode, and then it won't let me change. Uh, won't let me change these, and it'll give a little pop-up uh, mouse over text telling me what the value and type of each uh, each one is. And it looks like I actually can't copy or, or paste this the way I want to. So saving it as an image would be the best way uh, to put it into a presentation or something like that. Next up, I want to represent the supplies over time. So I want to look at the change in supply expenditure over time. And as I was experimenting a little bit with this, my original thought was that I would just select the months and then hold down control and then select the amounts and insert the chart that way. But Google seems to have trouble with that format. Let's see what it looks like. It's giving me some kind of weird results here. Um, uh, I don't really know what all these options do, but it's clearly having trouble. And when I did some troubleshooting, I found out that it really likes to have the labels vertically and the values vertically. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use um, the, a copy and paste feature to turn these into vertical rather than horizontal series. So I'm going to copy these months, and I'm going to go down here and right-click and paste special. And this is something that is a really useful feature, especially when you're working with formulas. And I'll explain why in a second. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Paste Transpose feature, which is going to turn it from a horizontal set to a vertical set. So it just takes those months and puts them vertically. Then I want to take these supplies and do the same thing. Copy that there and right-click, Paste Special, Transpose. So then when it's arranged the way I want it to and the way Google likes it to be arranged, I'm going to select those, and I don't need to hold down Control because they're right next to each other. Go into Insert, Chart, and here we've got it. It can put it in the scatter chart, but I'd like it in a line, a line graph. You can do it with shaded in regions, but uh, I'm just, I like a plain line chart. So I'm going to go to Customization, and as a title, I'm going to say... Supply costs. I don't need a legend because there aren't different categories here, so I'm going to click None, and that just gets that line to disappear over there. Um, I can make it a smooth line rather than a, a hard line. Um, I can I can label the axes, right? So the horizontal axis I can label as month, and the vertical axis I can label as amount. So it gives you some options there. I can change the vertical axis uh, minimum, maximum, so that this these numbers, but they're generated automatically, and it seems to be working out pretty well. I can change the grid lines, the number format, um, and other various things. What I'm interested, though, is I'm scrolling down, and I want to change the data labels. I want to put the labels on there so it's clearer what the amount is on the graph. And then I'm just going to click Insert. And here we have supply costs over time. So I can resize that. I can make it longer. I can make it taller, shorter. Um, I want to get something that kind of matches okay. 
And I think that looks pretty good, especially if I want to show visually over time how the supply costs change. Right? All right, last thing that we're going to do is do a, a bar chart, and I want to track the differences from budget over time. This is where I'm going to need to do something a little tricky because uh, if you look in here, if you look in the value of the cell, you can see that it's a formula. And as we've seen, when you copy and paste formulas with relative references in them, it's going to change the cells that it references. So instead of referencing this number here, if I copy and paste it somewhere else, it'll reference a number elsewhere. Let's see how, what that looks like. And I'm going to do the same kind of copy and paste um, transpose. So I'm going to these are the values I want, and I want to get them in a vertical orientation so they're easier for X, for Google to interpret. So I'll click Copy. I'll go down here, right-click, and Paste Transpose. And all of a sudden, we've got a problem here. Uh, something's not showing up right. So I'll click in here, and I'll take a look at what it's referencing. And it looks like, actually, what it's doing is it's taking this cell, which is the relative reference, and it's subtracting the, re the absolute reference that we had before. This isn't the number we want to subtract. We still want to subtract this number. So I'm going to have to do an intermediate step here. I'm going to go ahead and erase those values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these values. And instead of, I don't want the formulas anymore. I just want these values. So I'm going to go ahead and say copy. And then right below them, I'm going to right click and go paste special. And I'm going to paste values only. And that will paste, as you might guess just the values not the formulas. So instead of uh, having the formulas here we actually just have the value that is indicated. And I also want to make sure that the cell format is the way I want it to and so I'm going to go ahead and take a cell format I like with the dollar sign and the comma. I'm going to paint that format right onto these values so that they're centered and so on. And it looks like the conditional formatting went along with these cells. And if I that doesn't really matter for the purposes of the graph, but if I want to get rid of that conditional formatting, I can go to Format, Conditional Formatting, and I'm going to uh, go into the conditional formatting here, and I see that it's applying the conditional formatting. This is C14 through H14, C4, sorry, C4 through, wait a second, C14 through H14. And it's taking it from C4 to H14. I'm going to change that to H13 so that it doesn't cover the range that I'm talking about. Click Done. And now it's just covering down to here, and it doesn't cover these values. Now I'm going to do the Copy, right-click, and Paste Transpose. And it will get the values that I was looking for in the format that I was looking for. And then I can just erase um, erase these by highlighting them and pressing the delete key. Okay, now we've got the differences from budget lined up the way I want them to. I'm going to select the months, hold down the control key, and select the amounts. We're going to do the same thing that we just did, insert, chart, and uh, this looks like it. it's an okay way to look at it, but I actually want the vertical axis to be in dollars and the horizontal axis to be the uh, months. So I'm going to look down here. I don't want a line graph. Yeah, I could do a line graph. I'm not interested in it right now. I want a column, uh, column chart. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to go over to customization, change the chart title. Uh, I'm going to remove the legend so that that's not there. Um, and I'm going to add in, go all the way down, and I'm going to add in the data labels so that it's clear what the value is for each one. Insert that. And I actually might want a different color for these, so I'll make them purple. And I can move it to wherever I need to display that, that chart. Maybe I don't need that quite as big as it is. All right, so this has been a really quick run through, and I apologize that I, I haven't explained it in a very logical way, and that's partly because the way that I learn new things about how to build charts is mostly through trial and error. It, does, it takes a little more time, um, but it, I think it, uh, it makes the, the knowledge that you're learning a little more flexible um, because you, 
you learn about features that you might not have known otherwise if you know exactly step by step how to create any graph. So I encourage trial and error as a great way to learn about the program. Uh, but as I wrap up this last uh, training video for how to create budgets, um, I also want to introduce you to uh, some different ways to learn new features. And, uh, and as, as simplistic as this seems, if I were to want to learn how to make graphs or charts in Google Sheets, I would simply Google it. And I encourage this anytime that you need to learn a skill or learn how something works in Google Sheets or in Excel. Um, just type it into the Google bar. Because often other people have done these and have shared their knowledge um, in the same way that I'm trying to do. And anytime that you see the link, uh, the address that references support.google.com, um, it's a good bet that it's going to be pretty good quality answers. And that's, that, the same goes for Excel and other Microsoft Office programs. Um, say I wanted to learn how to make charts in Excel, um, I would probably want to uh, say which version I'm using. Um, and then support.office.com does a really nice job of talking step by step about how to create a chart. And you could always go to YouTube and search for the same question. There's a lot of information online. Once you realize the various things that you can do, uh, it's just a matter of making the time and, and kind of looking through the different explanations that are out there to find the information that will help you do what you want to do with graphs or any other feature in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. So I hope this um, series has been helpful. We've been looking at how to build a budget in Google Sheets. We went through Spreadsheet Basics, an introduction to functions. There's a lot more we can get to in introduction to functions, and I may uh, post a little bonus video of some other fun things you can do with functions and formulas. We looked at how to format cells and use conditional formatting, and finally, how to represent that data visually. So if you have any questions, go ahead and post comments, um, and hopefully this has been helpful.